And now we're going to go into a quick presentation from me. So my name's Leah Salmon, the Naturally You Coach. I'm a best-selling author of six books, a speaker, a nutritionist, recently a live blood anal analyst. I'm a mother of six children that we homeschool, wife to one who's outside. Oh, thank you. My husband's outside. He's just launched a new children's book for black children, teaching them about black economics. And this is my hair story. So I'm a nutritionist now. I've got the natural hair now. But to be quite honest, when I was little, I wanted to be this one. That's who I wanted to be because that's who I saw on the TV. That's the dolls that I had. That's the books that I had. When I got worksheets at school, that's what my teachers look like. That's what people in positions of power look like. That was the face and the scalp and the mane of authority, of importance, of beauty, of intelligence, of everything that a little girl aspires to be. And in this country, and in fact in many countries across the world that have been colonialized, that was the image of beauty. Long blonde hair, long blonde straight hair. And in a time where, now we've gone through a lot of periods of time as black people, we've gone through the time where before slavery, we were obviously a very proud people. We had no reason to think that anyone else was as beautiful as we were because we had so many examples of beauty and intelligence in our ancestral ancient lands and cultures. There was no question. Then we had people come in and by force rip away our culture, put us in a foreign land and force us to live another man's culture, another person's culture that was very foreign to us, and we would in fact be penalized if we tried to exhibit our own culture. Now with that came a, a different language, it came a different dress, a different language, a different religion, a, so many different things, so many things we, that were forced upon us. Then we got to the stage where we had some choices. Back in the 20s, we had some choices. We had some choices about what we wanted to look like. But again, the image that we saw on the TV was still that of a lighter skin, a straighter hair, a longer hair, a looser curl. And we did want to adopt those kind of images, which is why the first black female millionaire became a millionaire, because we were so hell-bent on looking like the people that were around us. So does everyone remember the name of the first black female millionaire in America? Madam C.J. Walker. And whilst it's amazing that she reached millionaire status in that time, it was mainly off the back of the hair care products that were straightening our hair and making us look like the people that were around us, the dominant society at the time. Then through history, a lot of us remember, we went through the black power movement where we all of a sudden wanted to take back what was ours. We wanted to take back and embrace our culture. We wanted to take back and embrace our beauty because we realized we weren't even being treated as humans. Even though we were trying to make ourselves look like the dominant culture, it still didn't actually have an impact on how we were treated. So we went through the black is beautiful. We went through listening to James Brown and our parents listened to James Brown and sang along to the songs. How can you, does, one of James Brown's lyrics was, how can you ask for respect if you're still, if you haven't cut out the process? Do you remember that song? That was one of the, the, the things we would proudly sing. And then we moved on to, for some other reason, we moved on to the Superfly era. And all of a sudden we had brothers with curlers in their hair and straight wavy hair and brothers wearing high heels. Something happened, I don't know what happened. I don't know, they put something in the water. I don't, know, I don't quite know what happened around that, about that time. But yeah, we did, I mean, and, and more recently, this has been one of my role models. And I did make that drastic shift from wanting to be this to wanting to be this in quite a short space of time during my teenage years. And I spent a lot of time with twists, and then I just wanted to cut it all off because at one point, I, I actually, and it was during my teenage years, in fact, and I'm sure a lot of us have hair stories like this, and I think it's actually really powerful for black women and black men as well to talk about our hair stories and talk about where we've come to and, and the, the things that we've thought and the changes that we've gone through and the different levels of realization because there's no shade, there's no right or wrong. It's not like, you know, if you're here, you're in a good place and if you're not here, you're in a bad place. It's not like if you wear a wig or a weave or you perm your hair, you're the devil's spawn and if you've got natural hair, you are the cream of the earth. It doesn't quite work like that because there's, there's women with natural hair who are just as bad minded as everybody else. Do we agree? Do we agree? Yeah. And that's something very important, is to very much understand that our hair does not make us. 
The way that we look does not define the beauty of our character and what the, the content of our heart. That's very important to understand that. However, our hair is very political. It's a political statement when you decide to roll up into work with an afro like mine, when yesterday you were looking a little bit more like this. It's a political statement. People will think, what is she playing at? What's she doing? So we do need to understand that not only is there a political aspect to the way that we wear our hair, there's definitely a health repercussion to the choices that we make. Because our hair is not separate from us. What we decide to do to our hair is going to have an impact on the way that we see ourselves, the way the world sees us, the way we treat ourselves, the way the world treats us, and also on our health as well. Now I find myself as a mother of six, mainly with a head wrap on, because it just covers all manner of sins, a head wrap. Um, and this is me basically right now, one hairstyle. I swear to goodness, the next 10 times you see me, nine of them will be with this hairstyle. <laughs> swear to goodness. And I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I'm a married woman. I'm cool with that. Um, now, as a nutritionist by trade, that's my first profession is a nutritionist. So I'm going to very quickly talk to you about um, one of the ways that, or one of the tools that I've just learned about, and I've, I've turned into a bit of a geeky nerd on this one, so forgive me. But, uh, but us, our ancestors were scientists, so maybe I'm just going back to my roots. But one of the ways that you can use natural, cheap processes and habits and behaviors to help, the sci help scientifically improve the, the condition of your hair is this. Now, believe it or not, and don't judge me, but up until about three years ago, and I've been to school, okay? I've been to primary school, secondary school, and college. Up to a few years ago, I truly believed your hair grew from the end. That's, don't judge me. I thought your hair grew from the tip and then got longer. That's what I truly believed. It's only a few years ago when I started studying hair more that I realized that, and I, 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 in my studies found out that your hair actually grows from the scalp, which I know sounds very obvious now, but it didn't at the time. So, <laughs> I mean, where was it gonna, how is it gonna grow from the tip? It, it, now, in, in retrospect, it makes no sense. But there we go. Um, <laughs> your hair grows from, the, from inside your scalp. So this is your hair sticking out of your scalp. This is your scalp along here. We've got the dermises. We've got all the fleshy bit down here. And this is where your hair actually grows from. So you've got this network of blood vessels that run along the bottom and those blood vessels go into the, the hair bulb and it's from the nutrients in your food, it, re, it, it creates the new shaft of hair that starts here and then pushes out to there. So around this part, this part of your hair, to some is considered still a living part. Once your hair pops out of your scalp, it's, it's, it's no longer living, which doesn't mean you can't do anything to affect it, but this is where the magic happens. This is where you can have a lot of impact on your hair, because if you can make the hair that's newly growing healthy, it's going to be healthier when it comes out. Therefore, there's going to be less work that needs to be done on your hair. So, the, and what makes up the blood is the food that you're eating. Your whole body is made up of the food that you're eating, the nutrients that you take in, the water that you take in. It's also made up of the things that we're exposed to that are non-foods, all the chemicals and the toxins and the, all the things that we're exposed to. But primarily, it is made up of the food. So the, the, the food that goes into your blood, the blood, the food goes into the tissues, the, the plasma of your blood, and the plasma of your blood delivers it to your tissues, and hair is one of the tissues. So when you're eating a healthier diet, it can actually practically help to grow a healthier hair on a scientific level. And obviously there's amazing preparations and things you can add to your hair once it's come out of your scalp, but making sure that your hair is grown from a healthy body is very important. Now one of the things that I learned last year, literally 12 months ago this month, was something called live blood analysis. Now I've been a nutritionist for the past 13 years. But, and, and there was actually a time seven years ago where I used to get really strong heart pains. It felt like I was having a heart attack and it would only happen about four times a year. But even after I had been a nutritionist and changing my diet and exercising and taking remedies, I couldn't work out what was causing it and I, therefore I didn't know how to stop it. I went to, and I'd heard about live blood analysis, but to be quite honest, I thought it was, I thought it was one of those 
funny things that people do that look fancy and make you spend a lot of money. I thought people were just trying to blind you with science. You know those, you know those QVC adverts where they have those things? This one piece of cloth can clean your carpet and your TV and can wash your clothes and can make your children behave better. And that's what I thought live blood analysis was. I thought it was just some fancy equipment that made you spend a lot of money. So I didn't really take it seriously. But I went to an event and the lady was doing it for 15 pounds or something. So I was like, like, let me try it out. She looked at my blood, talked to me around it. I was completely fascinated. She then gave me some advice. She said, go to that stall, buy this supplement and make sure you take it for 30 days. I took the supplement for 30 days and those heart pains went and they didn't come back for three years. So after that, I was a complete convert. And at the first possible opportunity, which was last year, I learned live blood analysis. Now, live blood analysis is literally where you get a drop of blood, you put it under a microscope like this one, you project it onto a screen, and then you can look around your blood in its live state. So it's not intended to cure or diagnose or treat anything, but your blood is considered the river of life. It's where your red blood cells are, white blood cells, your plasma, and your platelets. And inside the plasma, so in this, all the black space in the background is your plasma. All these round things are your red blood cells. This is called dark fields live blood analysis. So it's not going to look like the red blood because it's being passed through a dark field and then light is being projected onto it. So in the plasma is where your food is delivered. So just after you've eaten, this plasma is going to be scattered with tiny little um, white flecks. And those white flecks is the fats, the proteins, the salts, the, the hormones, bacterial organisms, funguses, viruses, they all end up in the plasma and your plasma delivers it to your tissues and that's how your tissues re regenerate themselves the job of your red blood cells is to carry oxygen that's the main job is to carry oxygen so they need to be this nice round shape they need to be clear in the middle so they're not carrying anything and in this way and then they shouldn't be too clumped up they should be free flowing and when they're in this this is a good indication that your body is functioning at an optimal level again it's not to diagnose but this is a good indication that your body is functioning at an optimal level now, this is a more interesting blood picture. So we don't talk about healthy and unhealthy blood. I'm a bit of a geek, so I'll be like, oh, that's gorgeous blood that is. Oh, God, that's gorgeous. But we don't talk about healthy and unhealthy blood. We just talk about, like, this is an interesting blood picture. Now, your blood lives for 120 days, about three to four months is how long your blood lives. So if your blood comes out looking like this, we can do things about the position of your blood, the shape of your blood, the, the, um, where your blood is laid out, but the, the actual... Um, shape of your blood is how it came out of your bone marrow. So again, that has a lot to do with your diet and your nutrition and what you're exposed to, your lifestyle, all those kind of things. So when we see a blood picture like this, as you can see, that clear plasma that we had in the last picture is scattered with bits and pieces. Now, these bits and pieces is because the person just ate. So when you are getting live blood analysis done, it's good to fast for about four hours because then the, blood, the body would have delivered all of the nutrients to your tissues and, and it wouldn't be showing up in your plasma anymore. A lot of us in the black community are sickle cell or sickle cell trait. This is actually what a sickle blood cell looks like. So very different than the round blood cells that we've got here. And in this shape, it's more difficult for, as we know with sickle cell, it's more difficult for the blood to actually move around the capillaries and the blood vessels, etc. and it causes problems. And obviously in this shape, it can't carry as much oxygen as this nice round disc. What we can see up here is something called rouleau, which literally means coin roll in French. And it's because the blood cells are stacked on top of each other like a stack of coins. That's an indication that the pH in your body is out of whack. Now, most of us have heard of Dr. Sebi and Lila Africa and people talking about the alkaline diet and alkaline foods. So when your pH is out of balance, it normally means that you've got too much of an acidic diet. How this relates to hair is that if your diet is acidic, then it makes it more difficult for your digestive system, your immune system, your circulatory system, all the systems that create beautiful hair to function properly. It also is going to mean that you're lacking in energy because you're not getting as much nutrients because your stacks, your cells are not flowing freely. They're all stacked on top of each other like this. So there's a lot that we can do when we see, oh, this is a, a little white blood cell, that, uh, uh, half, half of a little white blood cell is hiding behind there. So when we see a blood picture like this, we can, and then someone presents and their hair is not growing the way that we want it to, because when you look at your blood, you tell me you're drinking enough water and then we see your blood. You can't tell me I'm not drinking any sugar and then we look at your blood. It's a very easy way for us to, just as we did ancestrally, to use science to help us ensure that our health is at a, a, a good level. 
Now, this is um, something else that's quite interesting that you can see in your blood. So, I'm sure we're going to hear about it here more. You can develop bacterial infections, fungal infections, um, imbalances that, that affect the health of your hair and your scalp. This is actually a back... Oh, sorry. This is a bacterial um, formation that we can actually see in the blood. So when we see this in your blood and you have got a, hair, a, skin, a scalp condition, again, this is an indication that whatever your hairdresser has told you, we've just confirmed it. If they've said that you've got a bacterial infection or fungal overgrowth, this is what it looks like when it's in your blood. And then because this is here, it's affecting the blood cells around it. So these blood cells that look kind of like bottle tops. Again, if you're telling me you drink loads of water, but you've still got dry scalp or your hair is still dry, but we see blood cells like this and they're not next to an organism like this, this is an indication that you're literally like a grape. Your blood cell is shriveling up because it's dehydrated. We also see these formations. So this is when your body is just not breaking down food properly. And it's also an indication that your body's not processing fat properly. And when your body's not processing fat properly, that either means you're not eating a healthy enough fat. And uh, as a lot of us know, the health of our skin and our hair has got a lot to do with the essential fatty acids that our body's taking in. So even if you're eating a lot of essential fatty acids, healthy fats, but you're still eating a lot of the trans fats and your body can't break them down, it creates these big fatty masses in your blood, these big crystals in your blood. So there's four things. So it's very interesting, the process of live blood analysis, because it gives us an insight into what's happening in your body right now and how that is affecting your hair. Now, four of the things, and, and I'm, I'm not the health expert when it comes to hair. Um, and in fact, I, I highly recommend the, the speakers that are speaking on hair today um, because they are the true experts on hair. But just very briefly, from the work that I do as a nutritionist and on my health journey and my hair journey and with the five girls that we have and maintaining their natural hair, the four steps to natural hair care that I found to be most um, important is making sure you're eating enough whole foods because obviously that's what your hair is grown from, making sure you're drinking enough water, handling your hair well, because again, we're in a Caucasian country. Caucasians can use very, very fine tooth combs. And as a little black girl, I used to get them fine tooth combs and try to draw them through my hair, literally, and then wonder why my hair was broken out every 20 minutes. When someone showed me the wide tooth, you know the proper wide tooth combs? I'm like, what's that gonna do? What's a big old white tooth comb going to do? Not realizing that's actually what we're meant to be using to comb our hair. So um, the way that you handle your hair, very tight braids, not um, protecting your hair during the winter or even the summer sometimes, wearing weaves without maintaining your hair underneath it, all of those kind of things. Handling your hair is very important. And then obviously the hair products that we're using are very important. So focusing on having a balance of all of these things can help you to have nourished, lush locks. And that's what Sal from Root to Tip is gonna be talking about, Natasha Briscoe, Ovi King, and Sherilyn from Pure Goodness who are gonna be coming up. Again, you can find out more about the Black Women's Health Day where we speak about all black women's health um, challenges at blackwomenshealthday.com. And now we are ready to move on to the next part of the schedule. We're gonna have a little tiny musical interlude and then we're gonna get the next speaker on. So thank you very much for your time. And we'll be back in just a moment. Right now, we say 10 down, worry, peace and blessings, family. Once again, we are back, yeah? We are back, you know what I mean? At the Hidden Health Science Academy, Kings and Queens. It's about that time where we're dealing with the science of black hair. And we are here, I am blessed, yeah, to be sitting next to the hostess with the mostess of today's event, Kings and Queens. And she goes by the name of Leah Salmon. I can't even go into the resume. It's just too deep. Naturally, you coach, homeschool extraordinaire, you know what I mean? Nutritionist, um, you know, natural birth consultant that like the woman is this and i have to say one of the most lovely people you ever meet in life kings and queens it's, it's a, it's a, it's, i'm being honest i'm being genuine um you as the host yeah of, of today's event and you also presented yeah um this first of all in terms of what you was presenting on today give our, our, our viewers it's an idea of how you uh fitted into the presenting duties of today well, to be honest, Leon actually asked me to do a talk at the event solely, but 
whilst I have natural hair yes. and um, I have done talks on hair and hair health before, I actually didn't feel as qualified as some of my colleagues. Mm -hmm. So I actually recommended um, Sal and Sherilyn from Pure Goodness to be the actual authorities in natural health because that is their actual forte. Um, he still wanted me to be a part of the event and I definitely still wanted to support him in this event because it is a very important subject. So that's when we decided that I would be the host and talk about something that I've become a bit of a nerd over which is live blood analysis which is something that I've just recently learnt and so um, I was hosting the event and speaking about how we can use the tool of live blood analysis to find out more about what's going on in your body which we can then use to help um, make decisions about what we can do with your health using your food and your lifestyle and supplements that can help to contribute to having health, healthier black afro hair. Mm. So, I mean, break it down because somebody might be saying to themselves, what's, what's blood got to do with hair? Yeah, just ex explain that for us. Well, we saw a few slides in some of the presentations today mm -hmm. and I will admit, and I admitted this during my talk, that I, when I was younger, not even younger, like three years ago, <laughs> I thought your hair grew from the end outwards. That's what I thought. Then I realized that your hair actually grows from the scalp. It grows from the hair bulb. Now, the bulb of your hair that sits inside your scalp is fed by your blood vessels. So whatever is in your blood is going to get delivered to the bulb of your hair, which determines how healthy your hair grows out of your scalp in the first place. So if we can see the health of your blood, um, that will help us to, and if we can see your blood is lacking in something, or your blood is a reflection of your body, so if we can see from your blood indications, because it's not meant to treat or diagnose or cure, but we can see indications of things happening in your body through your blood. So it's like a, a, a gauge, it's like a tool that we can use. And everybody kind of knows that when you eat food, it goes into your blood and then your blood delivers it to your tissues. So when we're eating the right foods and we have the right environment, then it's going to be easier for us to grow healthier, thicker, stronger, lovely hair. So you also spoke a bit about your, um, your own kind of hair journey, yes? Um, and some, some people might say, well, what's, why is it important, yeah, how we wear our hair, yeah? You know what I'm saying? That people might be thinking that, and we still have these discussions today. Yeah. Like, it, don't, it just don't matter, yeah? As long as your hair is healthy, it don't matter. But what is to be said, I mean, why is the image, yeah, important in 2018? Eh? Well, in part of my hair journey, I went from wanting to be a blonde Barbie girl when I was about five years old, probably up until I was about 12, um, to wanting to be looking like Angela Davis. And what I was thinking about and what I've thought about on this whole journey is that if you've consciously made the decision that all things considered, you want to have straight different colored, different textured hair, and that's entirely your decision, all things considered, that's all on you. But if at any point, through any level of introspection, you've realized that the reason you want to look a particular way is because you link a particular look with beauty, with power, with aspiration, and that look has been enforced upon you, you need to take that into consideration because when I look back at it, I wanted to look like what I thought beautiful was, and what I thought beautiful was wasn't me, and there's a clear undeniable link between the positive the images that we see on the screen and in media and how we feel about ourselves which is why the doll experiment that was so popular where black children were shown dolls of that were black and white and asked which one's good which one's beautiful which one's naughty black children were saying the black dolls were naughty and the white ones weren't it, and then we have an epidemic of children who are of color who aren't looking at themselves are not performing as well behavioral wise not academically but behavioral wise we, it, it affects how we think about ourselves. There's an undeniable link between how beautiful we think we are and, and the images that we see that reflect us and everything about ourselves and self-esteem issues, things like bulimia, anorexia, skin bleaching creams, perm kits, all of these things have a health implication, they have a mental health implication. Black women disproportionately are affected by mental health issues. So again, all things consider, if you think you look hot to trot, you look gorgeous, you look beautiful, you look queenly, however you want to describe it, with your hair a different texture and colour than what you were born with, fine. 
But if you look in the mirror and you realize I'm only doing this because when I went to work, I got dirty looks when I wore my hair naturally. I'm only doing this because my boyfriend said that he prefers wavier hair. I'm only doing this because all of my friends got box braids and I wanted to wear my hair natural, but everyone else had box braids, so I'm gonna do that. You're not living you. And that's gonna have a health implication. It's gonna have a mental health implication. It's gonna have a societal implication. It's gonna have an implication on how you as a human being view yourself and how the world treats you as a result of that. It is incredibly important. And anyone that says it's not needs to do some more introspection. Well, my Gs, fam, you've heard it here, yeah? You've got a little taste of the energy and the power and the strength that is Sister Leah Salmon. I'm sure they're going to want more. So we want to let them know where they can find you, my sister. You can find me on social media under Leah Salmon or The Naturally You Coach. My website is thenaturallyyoucoach.com or thenaturallyyouclinic.com. And uh, yeah, I look forward to um, speaking at these events more often, seeing you guys more often, hosting more events, speaking more so that we can share and have this conversation more and in a very unapologetic way. There's no, you know, if you've got a weave, you can't join the conversation. If you've got straight in hair, you can't join the conversation. We all need to have these conversations because we are very versatile people. We're very versatile. I mean, if you go to Africa, there are tribes with blonde hair. There are tribes with green eyes and gray eyes and blue eyes. We are the originators of everything. Black women have got everyone's DNA in them. So we're going to come in all shapes, sizes, colors, creeds, everything. And that's fine. But it's everyone learning to love and respect everybody for who they are, as opposed to trying to all form one image and say that image is the image of beauty. Thank you very much, Leah Salmon, you know what I mean? And, you know, on the subject of Leah Salmon, we, quite, we have to big up the king, you know what I'm saying, Jeremy Salmon as well, because, you know what I mean, my man is a serious graphic designer, and he's also an author, and you will see, we're gonna, you're going to see his books, yeah, um, in, in some of these videos as well, you know what I mean? But that's beautiful because there's power couples in the community, kings and queens, not just individuals, but couples. And so we love that, and this has got Kush, and you ain't got nothing if you ain't got Kush.